Hi everybody, I'm Prashant. I'm a developer advocate with Facebook. I work on the Parse team. And in this session, we're gonna talk about relationships. So relationships are the, the, the link between objects inside your application. And it turns out that everyone at Parse is responsible for tech support. Uh, we spend a lot, of times on the forum, a lot of time on the forums answering various questions, answering emails that you may have, and so forth. And many of the questions we get are about relationships. Sometimes the questions are about are very overt about relationships. Things like, should I use arrays or should I use pointers? Those are always dependent on a, a bunch of factors, and we'll talk about that in here as well. Other times, questions kind of come to us, and we look through them, and we unpack the question, and we realize that, wow, you know, this would have been a lot easier had the person chosen arrays or had the cho person chosen uh, a, a parse relation or something else. So my goal in this session is to demystify relationships for you. Relationships are not complicated, at least in parse. And relationships in parse, they're simple, but it's easy to make the wrong decision about which one to choose. The good news is, because parse is so easy, it's also easy to go back and fix any mistakes you make. So in this session, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline the kinds of relationships you can have in your app, the ways you build relationships in parse, I'll go through the mechanics of building those relationships, and at the end, I'll give you a framework that will help you choose which relationship is most appropriate for your kind of application. And I'm hoping at the end of this, a lot of the questions you may have about relationships are answered, at least the easy ones are answered. So there are a few prerequisites to this session. The first thing I'm assuming is that everyone knows what a, what a parse user is, how to create a user, how to store a user, and how to assign a user to an object. The second thing I'm assuming is you know how to store data to the parse cloud and retrieve data from the parse cloud. And the third thing I'm assuming is you know how to build queries, how to query parse for data, and get a, pi a pile of data from parse to use in your applications. So a lot of the code I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna point out the relationships part of the code, but I'm gonna ignore this part of the code, so hopefully you can follow along. Now, there are actually three kinds of relationships you can have in your app. This is independent of parse. The first one in parse is a one-to-one -one relationship. I'm not gonna really dive into details about that here. It's a really special case, and if I have time later on, uh, I can take a question about when you would use one-to-one -one relationships or so on. Uh, but for now, let's focus on the, the, the predominant types of relationships you can have in your app. The first of those is one-to-many relationships. A one-to-many relationship is, let's say for example, we had a blogging application. And that blogging application enabled you to see a blog post or post a blog post, and then each blog post had many comments. That's a one-to-many relationship. One blog post can have many comments. And then conversely, one comment can only belong to a parent blog post. It can't belong to more than one. It's a classic one-to-many relationship. Another classic example is a customer can have many orders. A customer can create several orders, but a given order can only belong to one customer. That's a one-to-many relationship. The second kind of relationship is a many-to-many -many relationship. A many-to-many -many relationship, the, the canonical example for a lot of our modern apps today is users following one another. I'm following everybody in the front row, everybody in the front row is following other people as well. Another example is students and teachers. A student can have many teachers and a given teacher can have many students. And the example I'll use later on is a salesperson can have many accounts that are assigned to them and a given account can have more than one salesperson assigned to it. These are classic many-to-many -many relationships. Now, building relationships there in Parse, there are four ways you can build relationships in Parse. The first one is pointers, creating in one object a pointer to another object. Now, all of a sudden, you've got a relationship between these two objects. The second example is an array. Parse has an array type that allows you to store a bunch of objects in a particular, uh, particular column, an array of objects. Parse also has a unique feature called a parse relation or a PF relation if you're familiar with iOS. A parse relation is a unique construct to parse that enables you to create these many-to-many -many relationships. You create a relation on one object that is a relation to another object. A salesperson object can have a relation to an accounts object. And you can pour in accounts objects into those relationships. We'll talk about how to build that uh, in a little bit. And then lastly, if you're sort of an old school database programmer and you kind of think of these conceptually, we also have the notion of join tables where you create a specific table to manage pointers to relationships. So one object can be related to another object via this table. 
and we'll talk about how to build that as well. So let's dive in and let's talk about pointers first. Now pointers, from the very beginning when you start going through the parse quick start, pointers are where we get you started. And so a lot of people default to pointers, and it, as it turns out, that's actually not a bad idea. Pointers turn out to be the most scalable way to build one-to-many relationships. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say we have a blog post, and again, that blog post can have many comments on it. And a given comment, though, can belong to only one blog post. So let's put a pointer on the comment object. And so this pointer on this comment object will point back to a blog post. And now we've created a relationship between blog posts and comment objects. Conceptually, it looks like this. I've got a comment object, and it's got a text column, which is maybe a string. It's got an author column, that's the person who created it. That happens to be a pointer to a parse user. And then I've got a post column, which is a pointer to a blog post object. If we look at that in the data browser, what we can see is that we've got a column called author, which is a pointer to a, a parse user. And we've got a column called post, which is a pointer uh, to a blog post object. It's a really straightforward way to implement uh, a one-to-many relationship using pointers. Let's see how that looks like in code. So let's say I've got an instance of a blog post object. And then I, you know, in my app, someone uh, wants to comment on that blog post, so I'm gonna save that comment and associate it with the blog post. So first, I'll create the comment object. So here's a PF object comment, uh, of object with class name comment. I could set all the other fields on this comment. I mean, if I had a text field, for example, if I had any other fields, I would then set them in this location. And now I wanna create that association. I wanna create that relationship. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the object, the PF, the user, the current user, to be the author column. That now associates this comment with that user. And I also now want to set the blog post instance to the post column. And that creates the relationship between this comment and the blog post object. I can then save the comment, and now what I've got is a comment for that particular blog post instance. Okay? All right, so now let's get all the comments for a given post. So let's say somewhere we've got a blog post instance, so called blog post. And what I want to do is I want to create a query on a blog post, uh, I want to create a query on a comment object. So I've got a blog post instance, and I want to get all of its comments. So let's query on the comment object inside of parse, where the post column is equal to the blog post. I can set any other constraints I want, you know, maybe I want it by, I want it ordered, maybe I only want the first 10, whatever I want. I can set whatever constraints I want on that query, and then I execute the query. The result of that query in the block is an array of objects. And this array of objects happens to be all the comments that belong to this blog post. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. What about the other way around? Let's get the post that a given comment belongs to. So let's say that we have an instance of a comment object, and the post that this comment belongs to is simply the value in that post column. Now when we get that post, we may have to go to parse and fetch it uh, because that post has not come down uh, with uh, that query or has not come down automatically just by getting the value of the column. So this is how we first create a relationship between a blog post and a comment from the one to the many, how we query for the many, and how we query for the one. Now there's some pros and cons to using pointers. The first pro is you're able to use an include command on the query. We'll talk about that in just a moment. So just bookmark that, we'll talk about that when we get to arrays. The other really awesome thing about pointers is that it's really simple and it's really easy to get started and to use. Like I said, when you start with the parse quick starts from the very beginning, you're using pointers. And so this becomes sort of a natural way to just kind of segue into using pointers. They're also type safe. So when I create a column, a pointer column in my, uh, in my table, I'm creating a pointer to a specific type. So I can only save that type to that column. So it's type safe, that's pretty cool as well. If you're working in large teams, it helps you kind of in, uh, enforce uh, the right behavior among, across your teams. The other neat thing is that it will scale indefinitely. 
So if you've got a, uh, an object, a blog post, uh, and if you look at whenever Zuck posts uh, a comment on Facebook or posts a status on Facebook, there are like 10,000 comments within an hour. So you want to be able to support lots and lots of comments in this kind of scenario. And in this scenario, pointers will scale indefinitely. Now, there's some disadvantages. The first one is you can only model one-to-many relationships with pointers. That's probably OK for things like blog posts and comments. But if your app, you're starting out with an app, and you don't know really how your users are going to take you in a certain direction or another direction, and you're kind of worried and it's kind of squirrely about whether this particular relationship is going to remain one-to-many forever, well, you may want to think twice about using pointers. But for most cases, when you have a one-to-many relationship, you know you have a one-to-many relationship, and, you, and pointers are going to be your best bet. The other con is that getting objects on both sides requires two API requests. We saw that just a second ago. So for example, when I had a comment and I wanted the blog post, I'm going to do a query for the comment. I'm going to go get the comment. The second API request is I have to go fetch that post as well. And conceptually, pointers can be a little bit counterintuitive. You know, if I'm building a blogging application, the predominant thing about my blogging application is the blog post. People don't really care about comments in a blogging application. They care about all the blog posts. And so in this particular instance, I'm doing queries on the comment object, not the blog post object. And I have the blog post object. So sometimes, conceptually, it can be a little bit of a leap uh, to use pointers. All right, so let's take a look at the other alternative, which is arrays. Now, if we have the same scenario, a blog post points to a variety of comments, the problem with this is, you know, again, you know, Zuck, when he posts a status, gets 10,000 comments. So you, you can't very well create 10,000 pointers uh, to a blog, on the blog post object. You, there's no way to predict that. So in order to go the other way around, what we do is we create an array column on the blog post object. And so now what we've got is a, an array of comment objects that are associated with this blog post. And conceptually, what that looks like in the table is, let's say we've got a blog post object. You know, it's got a title, which is probably a string, content, which is probably a string, as a pointer to the author, the person who created it, but it's also got a, an array of comment objects uh, in its comments column. And what that looks like in the data browser is exactly what you'd expect. I've got a blog post object down here. I've got an author column, which is a pointer to a user. I've got a comments array, a comments column, which is an array. Note that it's not an array of a given type, it's just an array. This is what I meant by uh, pointers being more type safe than arrays. OK, so let's implement an array. So let's say I've got a bunch of comments, instances of comment objects, and I've got them in an array. So let's create a, uh, a PF object for the blog post, a parse object for the blog post, and let's store all the comments in the blog post. Well, that's pretty simple. All we're doing is we're setting the comments array that we have for the key, that comments column and then we save the object. That's it, that's all we have to do. We have an array, we just put it inside the array column uh, for the particular object, and then we save it. So what if you want all the comments for a given post? Well, I've got the blog post object, I'm gonna display it on the screen, et cetera, and all of its comments are simply the value of that comments column. So really, really conceptually, it just makes t total sense. I've got a blog post object, just give me the comments, I'm gonna pull them, I'm ready, I'm ready to go. What about the other way around? I wanna get the post that a given comment belongs to. So let's say we have an instance of a comment object, we'll create a query on the blog post object, and we'll query where the key comments, that comments column, is equal to the instance of the comment object we have. Now in this case, what parse does, it says, oh, this is an array, that equal to command actually means contained in, or is contained in. So what parse does when it sees that is it says, give me all of the comment objects in this particular array, uh, give me the comment objects in this particular array, or give me all the blog posts where uh, they in their, their comments column contains this particular comment. And then you run uh, the query in the background. One neat thing here is with an array, just like you can with a pointer, is you can use the include command. So this include key command, which is down here, the, the fourth or fifth line down, 
What it does is it says, when you execute this query to get me a blog post, get me not only the blog post, but get me all of the comments as well. So just do one round trip, get me the query, get me all the blog posts. So the include key is a pretty powerful command uh, here when you're using arrays. Now there's some pros and cons to using arrays as well. So for example, uh, you can use include on the query, which is awesome. Uh, it's also pretty easy to, get, uh, to, to, uh, to use and get started because conceptually it's just taking a pile of things and storing it in a given object. With arrays, you can model both one-to-many and many-to-many -many relationships, which is also great. And the other really important thing about arrays is you don't have to do any kind of magical stuff to maintain order. So if, you, if the, uh, the array of objects matter, the order of the array of objects matters, arrays uh, are gonna be a really great bet. Now the cons, it's not type safe. We saw that when, they, when we created a column of type array, it's not an array of certain things, it's just an array. And the other thing that's important to know about arrays is they, they're not gonna scale to really large relationships. Arrays are awesome when the one-to-many relationship that you're talking about, or even the many-to-many -many relationship you're talking about, where the many side is a known, is a predictable and known size. For example, uh, if I wanted to keep track of all the states that a given user has lived in, uh, in the United States, there's only 50 of them. So I'm never really gonna be able to get into a thousand elements in that particular array. So arrays are awesome for that. If, however, I'm trying to store comments in a blog post, arrays are probably not the best thing because I'm not gonna be able to predict the size of that array. Okay? Okay, so so far we've talked about one-to-many relationships and pointers versus arrays. Let's talk about a couple of more uh, different ways to build relationships and parse. The next one is relations. So relations, like I said, are a unique construct in parse, and it's a great way uh, to build many-to-many -many relationships. So how do you use relations? So let's take a look at this example. I have a salesperson object, and I've got an account object. A salesperson can belong to or own many accounts, and a given account can belong to more than one salesperson. So this is your classic many-to-many -many relationship. And so what I'm gonna do in order to model this is I'm gonna use this PF relation or parse relation construct. And what you do is you create a parse relation and you assign it to a given object. And so here, this salesperson object has got a parse relation. I'm gonna give this parse relation a name, for example, accounts. And through this relation, I'm gonna manage all of the different accounts that belong to the salesperson. So when I take a given account, I can save it to the accounts column on a salesperson and I've got this relation automatically set up. And I can query both ends, which we'll see in a second. The way you create a parse relation is in the data browser, you can name your column, you give it a type relation, and then you give it the type that the relation is of. So here I've got a relation for the accounts type, or the account type. And then in the data browser, it looks like this, where I've got here an accounts uh, column which is of type relation to an account. So how do we implement a PF relation? So let's say we have an instance of an account object. And let's say we also have an instance of a salesperson object. And what we wanna do is we wanna assign this account to the salesperson. So what we'll do is we'll set all the other properties we want on the salesperson. And then let's create a relation. So we'll create a relation here, PF relation, relation. And we're gonna create the relation off of the instance of the salesperson object. So the salesperson object, if you recall, has a column named accounts, which is of type relation to an account. So what I'm gonna do here is create a relation from that person. And then I'm gonna add the account object to that relation, and then save the person. And so what I've done here is I've got a salesperson object, I've got an account object, I take that account object and I put it in the, in the relation that the salesperson is using to manage all of the, uh, to manage the salesperson and account. So how do we query uh, and get all the accounts for a given salesperson? So let's say again, we have an instance of a salesperson. And what we wanna do now is get the accounts relation from that salesperson. 
And then we'll create a query based on that relation. We can set any constraints we want on that query. I only want accounts that uh, contain the name Acme, or I only want accounts uh, that are ordered by a given date, or I only want the last 10 created accounts. I can create whatever constraints I want on that query. That query happens to be off of that relation. And then I can execute the query. The result of this query is objects, is, is the result of this query, in this case, all the account instances that belong to the salesperson. What about the other way around? This is where it gets kind of cool. Uh, and you can get all the salesperson objects for a given account. So let's say we have an account object, an instance of an account object. Let's create a query on salespeople. And what I want to do is I want to query where that accounts column, which happens to be a relation, remember, is equal to that instance of an account object. I can add any constraints on that, I can execute the query, and by executing the query, what I've got is all of the salesperson instances that are related to that account. So this is a classic many-to-many -many relationship. And this is sort of like the, the height of sort of the complexity that you may have in one of your, uh, in one of your apps. And it's incredibly easy to create these relationships between different objects. So let's say, what are the pros and cons of using parse relations? Well, the first thing is that parse relations are gonna be more scalable than arrays for large relationships, in the same way that pointers are more scalable than arrays for one-to-many relationships. The other thing, as you saw, is I can restrict queries on either side. I can do any kind of constraints uh, that I want to get the data uh, of specific, specific kinds of data that I'm interested in about the relationship. Now, parse relations are a little bit difficult to grok conceptually. It took me uh, a good couple of days and asking Hector a lot of stupid questions to get over that initial hump. But parse relations, like once you do them, like it's like this magical thing that opens up to you, like, oh wow, this is amazing. And with just a few lines of code, I can create massively complex apps. Unfortunately, you can't do include on queries and they don't support order. Anything you wanna do related to order, you're probably gonna have to use arrays. Okay, so parse relations kind of interesting. Turns out under the covers, it's also just creating a little join table, which gets us to tables, join tables. So join tables, most of us in this room uh, who've been programming for a while are very familiar with this concept. So let's say uh, we have got two users who want to follow one another. I've got Robert and I've got my, his buddy Pierre, and Pierre wants to follow Robert. And so what we'll do is we'll create a follow table. This follow table has two pointers on it, the to user and the from user. The from user is the person that's doing the following, and the to user is the person that's being followed. I can do the same thing for other friends of Robert, people who wanna follow him, the people who are following are pointers from the from, the people who is being followed are the to. Really, really simple. You're just creating a simple little table called a follow table, and you're creating pointers and assigning pointers uh, on different elements in that, in that table. Turns out, like I said, for something this simple, this is parse relation. You don't have to create a table, anything else. So the question is, you've got this parse relation concept in parse that's doing exactly this, so why would you ever wanna do this? Well, you'd wanna do this when you wanna attach metadata to the relationship. This isn't metadata to the objects. This is metadata to the relationship. For example, you may want to keep track of when that relationship was created. And so that's when you have, to, you have to say, well, parse relation's really cool, handful of lines of code, super easy to get started and use, and sadly, I gotta abandon that buddy and I gotta go to tables. So tables are awesome for this scenario. So let's implement this relationship with tables. So let's say we've got the current user, uh, Robert, and we've got, let's create an instance of a follow class. And then that follow class, what I wanna do is I wanna set the from object to be Pierre, which is the current user. And the to object is RG3, his buddy Robert. And then I wanna set any metadata on that object as well. And then I save it. 
And now I've got this relationship between Pierre and Robert. So let's say we want to answer the question, does Pierre follow Robert? So let's create a query on the follow table. And we want to set the keys. The from user we want to say is the current user, which happens to be Pierre. Let's just say that. And the to user is Robert. And then what we do is we query, and we get the count of the objects. And if that value, that number that comes back is greater than 0, then yes, we know that there exists an instance of a follow table where Pierre is following Robert. And so we know that Pierre does follow Robert. Again, you can do this with PF relation, but if you're trying to keep track of metadata, you would use the table. So why would you use tables? Well, the pro is you can attach metadata to the relationship, just like I said. It's just as scalable as pointers, because indeed it is pointers. It's just as scalable as PF relation, because underneath the covers it really is the same thing. And it's very concept similar conceptually to what a lot of us in this room already know and possibly have grown up with. The cons are you have to manage your own join table when there's this really cool, shiny, parse relation over here that you may want to use. OK. So, so far, what we've done is we've gone through and we've looked at the four different types of relationships. And so now let's kind of pull it all together and let's make some decisions about which relationship we should choose. So again, we have two kinds of relationships. We have a one-to-many relationship and we have many-to-many -many relationships. There are questions you have to ask that will help you decide which ones you want to do. So on the one-to-many side, let's focus on that first. How many objects are involved in the many side of the relationship? If that number is predictable, then you should use arrays. So let's take a look at these two scenarios. As I mentioned earlier, let's say I want to keep track of all the states that a particular user has lived in. And so, you know, like, let's say they've lived in Maryland, let's say they've lived in New York, let's say they've lived in California, and so on. That number is never going to be greater than 50. And so that number is very predictable. I know there's an upper bound on it. I know that, you know, for most people, they're not going to really live in more than five or six states, and so on. So the right scenario here is to use arrays. It's just going to be a lot easier from a syntax perspective, code maintenance perspective, and so on. Let's look at a scenario on the right-hand side, where I'm trying to keep track of all the albums that a given person owns. You know, so let's say you know, I own Guns N' Roses, Killers. I own Justin Bieber. I do own all the Justin Bieber albums. I own all the Queen albums, too, so I do have some taste. But in this scenario, that number of albums for a given user is unpredictable. Some people have 8,000 albums. Some people only have eight albums. Some people don't even buy music anymore, right? So the number of albums for a given user in this scenario is arbitrary and unpredictable. So the best scenario in this case is going to be pointers, because pointers will scale indefinitely. Make sense so far? All right. So now let's talk about many-to-many -many relationships. So we've kind of covered this a little bit, but let's say we've got salespersons, uh, salespeople and accounts. And for most scenarios, this, you know, the best thing is going to be, I don't want to say most scenarios, for some scenarios, the best thing for you to do is just use parse relation, and it's going to be easy from a syntax perspective, really easy to create in the data browser, really easy to view, because in the data browser, when you look at a relation, you can click on it, and then you, can, you go right to the user that's related to. It's pretty cool. But let's say I wanted to keep track of additional information about this relationship between the salesperson and the account. You know, for example, maybe I want to know when the account was assigned. I want to know what's the commission rate for this particular salesperson on this particular account. When was the last contact between this salesperson and this account? These are the kind of things I may want to keep track of in this relationship between salesperson and account. And in this case, the best scenario for you is going to be to use a table. All right. So let's sum up, and then we'll take some questions. So there are four ways to build relationships in Parse. Pointers, which are really easy conceptually. Like I said, when you start with the quick start in Parse, you're starting with pointers. And it's really simple to keep going from there. Arrays, which are really awesome for things where you know 
that the size is constrained and going to be predictable, or where you need order to maintain order. Parse relation, which is a great, shiny little concept in parse, which is awesome. It's going to result in really tight, really understandable code, uh, and it's really great in the data browser as well. Or join tables, which is when you want to keep track of uh, information or metadata about the relationship between two objects. Each of these has trade-offs, pros and cons. Uh, and, but most scenarios, if you're kind of, kind of thinking about the scenarios in your own apps, most of the scenarios in your own apps kind of lend themselves automatically to one of these four different types of things. Now, a couple of resources I want to mention. Uh, this deck will be online. Uh, this session will also be online. This deck will be online. I'll have both uh, Android as well as iOS code. And I've also written a parse relation guide, which is very similar to our push notification guide. Uh, this parse relation guide will go online next week. Uh, so everything I've just said will be very clearly written. Uh, so hopefully we can head off a lot of the questions that we get. So with that, I want to thank you. And I'll go ahead and take questions. If you, if you know that you're going to use a um, PF relation, uh, is it required that you go into the data browser first and set that relation, or through code only, it would know? That's a great question. So you, through code, you, you can create it through code. I like to start in the data browser. I think I'm kind of old school that way. I like to start in the data browser and visualize what my application is going to look like. That way I can just kind of be consistent throughout my app. But I think you can do it through code as well. Hi. Um, in traditional databases, for, from a performance standpoint, we use a lot of in indexes, indices. Um, does parse automatically create those smartly, like using foreign keys and stuff? Or uh, because something like what some of the examples that you gave, if you are searching from, like, if you're searching for, let's say, all people who lived in Maryland in your state's example. If you don't have efficient indices on the states, then it's a matter of searching the entire table of people and looking at each at that array and then going through each of them. That sounds extremely slow. Yep. So how, how does Sparse handle that problem under the hood? So I don't know how we actually do it under the hood. We'll talk to Sham later, and maybe he can give us some uh, insight into that. Uh, but uh, we do, a lot, do do a lot of intelligent things under the covers to make those kind of queries a lot faster. Uh, parse relation in that instance may not be like the best thing to do. Uh, arrays should be fine because you're just kind of doing a reverse lookup on pointers. But uh, how it goes on under the covers, we can talk to Shyam later and we can get an answer. Got a question back here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's four types of relationships, and I was wondering, um, do you have apps that are using like all four? Are there a, a few that you would recommend not using together? Um, are there I'm just kind of curious, like as yep. you know, as we map out our, our database, are there a few that just conceptually do not go together? Well, I have an app that I'm about to do that has all four in it. But uh, the, the, the sort of non-facetious answer to your question is, you know, when you have various scenarios in your app, they're going to lend themselves to certain of these, uh, these types of relations. So for example, uh, in an app, you may have a follow following relationship. Uh, you could do that in parse relation, but you also may want to keep track of when that follow following relationship was created, in which case join table is going to be the best thing to do. So there, you know, it's, it all, it's all dependent on the scenario inside of your application. It's totally feasible to use all four, but probably not all four on the same relationship, right? So, but totally feasible to use all four in a given app. Question? Yeah. What about like a, a fan out sort of problem where you have followers, um, you know, and follower, you know, your, your two way follows, many to many? And you want to, you know, show all the tweets of all the people they follow. Mm -hmm. um, are you familiar with that approach? And yeah, how? absolutely. We had a question, a support question about this exact thing uh, the other day. Uh, it turns out um, that's a little bit more complicated. Uh, it's uh, the the parse relation isn't always the best thing for that. Uh, and the question is, it's actually kind of uh, an important one. So I'll kind of rephrase it. Let's say you've got a many-to-many -many relationship between users, and you want to get, or between objects, and you want to get sort of a secondary thing as well. So you're doing a query for all the tweets of a given user, and then you want to get all the you know, 
something else about those tweets. So you want to go kind of two levels down. Uh, it's easy to kind of do something there where you kind of back yourself into a corner and then you have to go back and rethink. Uh, it turns out we, we were looking at potentially doing some of that stuff automatically for you, but there's sort of a philosophy at working and listening to Kevin's talk earlier today. There's sort of a philosophy also that we have where we don't want to black box too much stuff. So we could do some of those queries for you automatically, uh, but we would also be hiding from you the fact that you are doing multiple queries uh, to get to that endpoint. So we feel like in those kind of scenarios, we don't want to make it seem like Parse is going to do some magical stuff for you. We want you to like understand exactly what you're doing with the number of queries and the number of requests. That particular case is it's actually pretty easy to back yourself into a corner, and then you'll be like, "Wow, I can't actually build this query." And then you go backwards, and you maybe put the parse relation on the other side, and then it works magically. Uh, there is a way to create a query. That's that's exactly the kind of scenario where that is where where you where you choose which column or which object the parse relation should be on. That's the scenario where that becomes important. Yep. If your patch if you're catch, caching the PF query, is there any difference in the way that the pointer versus the PF relation uh, behaves? Uh, let me think about this. So, well, with the pointer, you could also uh, kind of do the fetch and background if needed. Uh, so you can like cache things, and then Parse can tell you if it. You you can write in your code that I want to go in the background and get it if I need it. Right. I'm not sure if you can do that with Parse relation. Okay. So. Is there a way to to make the relationship not type safe if you have a kind of business logic reason for that? Can you create a, a, a relation on a object? I wonder. Yeah, if you have kind of an arbitrary number of, if you want to create something like a, a relationship between kind of nouns and verbs where you've got these specific relationships, a way to make that not type safe? Yeah, let me let me think about that, and you know, we'll we'll take that off up here. I have to think about that one. Is there any consideration to not in queries or not contained in? Because I mean, the cases that you've really discussed out here all basically looked at the keys and then tried to find all the queries. Uh, but what in case the scenario is reversed? For example, the use case where you said that everybody who lived in Maryland, I said, uh, you know, let's revert that and say, let's figure out the users who've never lived in California. Right? Does that make a difference in terms of which particular relationship to use? Uh, not really, because you're still the many side is still less than 100. So not really. Any other questions? All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, after this session, uh, two things I want to do reminders of. First one is uh, fill out the survey so you can get a t-shirt. And the second thing is the session immediately after this is in the general session hall, and it's the show and tell, which is going to be a lot of fun. So uh, definitely go and check that out. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.